And we've touched, touched on earlier this, this um, thought about um, shops getting larger, and I'll keep coming back to that as well, and, and showcasing product. Um, agglomeration, um, if, if we look at the really big uh, retailers by turnover, um, a lot of it's about food stores. Decentralization, um, I've touched on the out of town, the growth in floor space, but it, it has certainly adversely affected in town. And then polarization, uh, both in terms of location, occupiers and the internet. And we're seeing that particularly in terms of property. I wanted to talk about polarisation as well, just in a bit more detail, and I've touched on it already. Um, and we are reading all the time, and we are certainly experiencing every day in the office this big focus on both London and major capital cities globally. So from a retailer's point of view, what certainly is happening is, is all of this technology becomes available and distribution channels um, improve and so on and so forth, that the market has, has gone global. So retailers are looking at their benchmarking, what's the opportunity in London versus Paris or New York or Hong Kong. Um, interestingly, at least for me anyway, it's, it's quite, quite interesting just to look at the rentals um, on the location, which comes out of our data there. Um, we're looking at uh, actually the potential for some rental growth in central London, so that's something to look forward to. And you can see the, you can see the growth curve there um, in terms of what rents have been doing globally obviously dropped well down in 2009, but globally um, rents are generally rising. And what's happening uh, there, in a, again in a global context, we're seeing this um, dual track market emerging, China, India, fantastic performance, and then Middle East, um, Europe, etc. But we talk about flight to prime in the UK, and that's certainly uh, what we're seeing, be it major centres, cities, retail parks. International, going international, um, again just developing that theme, we're seeing this both from the point of view of landlords and occupiers. Uh, from a landlord point of view, very interesting to look at Westfield, what a great job they've done. They've done, they've come into the UK, um, obviously from Australia, bookended uh, London with two absolutely world-class shopping centres, kind of came from nowhere if you like. Um, and one of the questions is, who's the landlord of the future. I, my, my, what I suspect is you may not even know them yet because they're elsewhere in the globe, but they will be coming to the UK. And quickly on Unibuy Rodanko, um, 94 centres, um, we have one or two CSC representatives I know in the audience, so I hope I've got my stats right, but just interesting to look at the size of that business um, uh, versus um, some of the UK funds. And again, what's going to happen? To, to those UK REITs, etc., um, because they're looking relatively small companies as against uh, a Unibuy. And that, that little um, point there, we're in Vienna, not Austria, it, it underlines the importance of the city and what's going on in the city as opposed to necessarily the country. Um, then, just quickly on occupiers, um, the, the thing we, we do uh, some property work for Apple, and what I just wanted to draw out of that was. I was talking to them about property and was asking them one or two things. And, um, you know, the conversation was, well, you know, what do you do? What does property mean? And rather than getting a property answer, the answer I got back was this um, change people's lives, which I thought was, you know, that was kind of quite a profound, it sounds incredibly arrogant. Uh, I've talked a lot about Apple, um, but that is uh, what they see their stores doing and what their technology does. I won't spend too long on this because we've had a lot on innovation, service, uh, and experience um, already earlier in the day, but what, what we can see is enormous change going on in the store, and it is all coming through into, the, into, into property. The one I wanted to just pick out of that, um, that's Jack Wills in, in Chichester. We've talked a lot about what's going to happen to these stores, how are you going to get that experience going on, what does it all mean? That's, uh, in my language, that's an off-pitch building. It's, it's obviously a house. Um, it's a Georgian house, a lovely lawn out the front. 
Um, it's an unusual type of retail building. But Jack Will's a you know fantastic, um, fantastic brand, very confident. So I see some of that type of development in the market in the future where a brand, a retailer is really able to extend its brand, <laughs> what we talked about, that interface um, with, uh, with its customer. And also, um, convergence, the online um, retailers coming into stores and brands that we haven't yet seen on the high street or in shopping centers. And I think that again will be a big trend in the future and I think where certainly some new demand will come from, and we certainly need that. Uh, Microsoft restores in the US, House of Fraser, um, I was involved with this in Liverpool one, that's just a, a 2,000 square foot shop. Um, it, is a, it's, it is basically click and collect, it, it's a really superb store. Um, Bowdoin with a, a pop-up in Reading, um, eBay, 10th story at Christmas. Um, so who's next? That, that is a little mock-up of Amazon. I don't think it's a real, um, but we could see that, we could see that happening. Plenty of this going on. Um, occupiers reshaping their property portfolio. So again, quite a challenge here um, for the owner, for the to reach its customers, but let's say, in, let's say now it's about 75 to reach 70% 70 of the UK population. But it's that sort of number that is, gained, that, that is what we might describe in the future as a, as a, as a multiple. Um, and then examples there, uh, yeah, Primark and, and Click and Collect. In response, landlords are needing to adapt and change things. Um, there's, there's obviously going to be much less development pipeline in the future, but what we are seeing is what I would describe as asset development. So that was building into demand in Birmingham, some restaurants, event space at Blue Water with the glow, which we, uh, again, I think was touched on. It's that experience. How do you really engage um, with the customer? And just space replanning on the bottom right there, um, a lot of retailers are looking for bigger stores. And I think one of the trends that, that we are certainly seeing in shopping centers is less shops, but retailers taking bigger stores. And, and it's one way of dealing with the demand. Um, Peter Drummond, who's gonna speak a little bit um, after me, is gonna, I hope, touch on secondary centers and, and some of these things, and particularly the Mary Portus. There are some big challenges we know around secondary centers. Um, but uh, it, what I'm really encouraged about by this morning is all the positive things that, that I think potentially technology can do for these locations, click and collect. Um, it's going to need a bit of government intervention as well. Um, they do definitely have a future. It's different from what it is now. I think you've got to look for the really good parts. If you go to Margate and Ramsgate, the retail is absolutely awful. It really is. But if you actually look under the skin of the town, there's some great stuff there. So very quickly, um, you might say I would say this, wouldn't I? But I absolutely believe it. Um, there is no question, and others have said, physical property um, is, is going to stay very much part of that multi-channel offer. Um, it's, going to, it's going to change, um, and it'll be, it'll be different in the future. But as, again, as we heard earlier, I, I, I think what wins through is that shopping experience, that, that social gathering. and. It's all about fun and having a good time, which you can see from those images. Brilliant. Thanks very much.